I'm I thought I had a burp. Alright. What was I finna say? Oh yeah, this whole ice spice shit, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Um Is is she falling off? Like, is she falling off? Like, what are we what are we what are we like? Let's see, let's see. Secret that rappers come and go every single year. One moment an artist can be. But we've been, but the thing is, we've been knew Ice Spice wasn't gonna stay in the game for like. I say, I'll tell y'all right now, and mark my words, Ice Spice got at least two more years. That's max, max two more years, and I and I feel like two more years is really a stretch, really a stretch. If she passed two more years, if you do like the little Yali run, then um, I don't see it, but we all knew it. We all. We all loaded for a butt and not her. Um, I can't find nothing wrong with that, but um, you know, let's just get to it, bro. Be on top of the game with everyone wanting a feature, and the next they can be completely falling off. What, what, what technically was falling Why off? Why so Jack Harlow? You know what I'm saying? I done made 30 million. I don't gotta do Yo, do I, do I, do I gotta keep making music, bro? I don't need to, bro. I'm, I'm rich. I don't need to make music. I do it because I know I still have fans. And with that fall off, obviously comes a lot of scrutiny and public embarrassment. And the saying really is true that the quicker someone rises up, the faster they will likely fall back down to the bottom. There is a myriad of reasons for this phenomenon. Nah, the baby did some stuff though. For one, we obviously live in the fast food era of media, from movies to music, and even videos and online content we digest on a daily basis. Most pieces of major media now seem to lack a certain quality they possessed in the past. And I'm not necessarily just talking about from a budget standpoint. Today things seem more rushed, more formulaic, less thought out, and moments tend to come and go faster than ever before. We live in an age of information and content overdrive, and with social media, anyone and everyone can now go viral. And every day there are millions of people desperately yearning and grinding away to try and get themselves out there. Meaning when someone does make it, there is a good chance that hundreds, if not thousands of people, will try and replicate their success in some shape or form. And since most of the artists who blow up really fast do not have the fan base in place to carry them through the tough times, it's easy for these fickle fans to turn their backs on or simply stop caring about a rapper's music. There's so many parts of that era of rap where like people got fame he had nobody there there's so many tends to turn their backs on who, who is that small part or simply stop caring about bro there's nobody there but a rapper's music there's so many parts of that era of rap where like people got fame so fast they were so young you know what i'm saying like and i feel like that was some of the foresight that he was saying not even necessarily about quote unquote falling off you know what i mean uh do you don't think he, you don't think he, he just looked like a dummy. I don't think he this shit. No. It's like trying to build a house with no foundation. Like if one strong gust of wind comes through, or adversity in this case, well, suddenly no one is playing the music, no one is going to the shows, other artists stop hitting you up, and the industry decides they no longer want to play with you. It turns out like it's not picking up phone calls. I ain't no, I ain't no friendly anyway though. You know what I'm saying? So that that kind of that ain't had no type of effect on me. Like I barely called. I ain't called. I was on when I was on top. Oh yeah, and you still owe the label five albums. You got to pay back the advance they gave you, which is really just a high interest loan. They now own your master. Basically, they own your basically though, and they're taking most of the money from your tour if you can still do that to try and recoup their investment on not only you but 20 other failed artists before you. Not to even mention your new lifestyle and image you can no longer afford, eating away at your pockets. By the time many artists finally see this reality, it's far too late to turn back. Like even when you strike when the kettle is hot and the industry likes you, you still will likely be replaced at some point. This combined with an intense oversaturation of the music market has really affected an artist's chances of maintaining relevance <coughs> for more than a couple of years. All right, no, Mario been, Judah, that, yeah. like number one song at da 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 or like, you know, album sells this. You know, and then I put out some shit. Are we talking about Ice Spice, Zayn? I take a I'm, kind of a left turn. When we get, when we get to Ice Spice. You know, and it does not hit. You know, and how fickle the inertia required to see you know, because it's, it's crazy. Now with that being said, right, let's, let's talk about Ice Spice, a female rapper who took the internet by storm over the last couple of years, but more recently has seen a serious downtrend in her career, and now tens of thousands of people are unfollowing. And we all gotta realize, one part one one part of a fall off is the one that everybody was after the most was her body. 
As soon as she got skinny, everybody's like, yeah, Ice Spice ain't the same no more. I ain't, oh, Zimpic Spice and all this. Like, bro, nobody really, nobody really wanted to mess with her like that no more. And then the second part of her downfall was when she got, um, where her old ex-best friend or whatever the, whatever it was, the black girl, said she was faking or doing all the other stuff, fat shaming all this other stuff her every single day. Ice Spice is a New York rapper from the Bronx who started making music back in 2021. How was that going up there? Like? Cause let's be honest, her, so you see this right here, bro? Nigg niggas used to love this. Niggas love this right here. What we got now? Basically. It was fun. It was real fun, like, you know? fighting off crackheads and shit like that. And over a year later, she would find herself going viral with her music video for her song, Munch. This was back when TikTok was turning out number one records on a daily what basis. What the hell am I for things to go crazy? Um, so there was a couple songs before Munch. It was probably like four songs, I think. From the start, she knew that her greatest asset was just that. Shaking her rump, rubbing her cooch, and rapping in that New York accent made her infamous right off the bat. When I say that, I mean some people were hating on her, a lot of people were loving her, but all that mattered was that she was finally popping off. Growing up, I always would just like write little raps, and um, I never wrote like full songs though with like hooks and verses until I got- Like she, like she only blew up. The only reason the music video blew up because her butts, bro. Like. We gotta be honest, bro. I mean, I think we all know this. We are honest about this. older, and I started to understand song structure more, but um, I always had like this like want to write, basically. Even in promotional videos that she made before she went viral, it was beyond clear that she knew that her body was her ticket to fame. And at this point, she's one of those people who's known more for her likeness and her sex appeal than her actual music. I feel like a lot of people think that oh i'm just like this like pretty girl that like post on instagram but there's like millions of pretty girls that post on instagram and like you know you have to really contribute to the culture in order to like matter i would actually say that her existence online is more like a meme than a rapper now to be clear the two do go hands in hand in her success and she could not have one without the other i mean recently she was on stream i was just thinking Nine. about that bro he tells her to freestyle and guess what she does out of pure instinct just start popping that poop come up come up I know Kyle was in the back like, what the hell? So Munch comes out, it goes viral, she signs a record deal and starts showing up doing live performances where her job is strictly to get up there and shake that ass. It was at that time that she would be seen frequently with Drake, and rumors of the two dating of course surfaced from there. Under the label, she would release her first EP, which featured more viral songs like Bikini Bottom, In Her Mood, Delhi, and Princess Diana with her longtime idol Nicki Minaj. When I met Nicki, right, for the first time in person, um, I was like at her studio and she was like doing her glam and stuff. Were and then nervous? I was nervous. Yeah. She came out, right? Yeah. And um, I was fine. But she came out and she looked at like uh, my manager, James and like Riot and stuff and my photographer and everything. And um, then she came at me. And when she came to me wow. and she hugged me, I started crying because it just felt like a, a, I, I cried, but I walked away. Like I didn't say anything to her. I was just like. This EP was a pretty massive success for her. I mean, to me, it all sounds like one long song. The EP was but trash the to me. audience definitely ate this up. It was like the perfect yeah, people for women, know, I ain't, and I, I would think gay men, to get ratchet to. <laughs> Songs about being a baddie, twerking that ass, getting money, and things like that. Don't get me wrong, with this newfound fame also came a lot of new people who this nigga funny. despised her. I feel like when you're like huge, um... <laughs> And people just gonna want you to fall, you know what I'm saying? But either way, as long as people were talking about her and she was still going viral, I doubt either she or her label could care less. This EP was enough for the machine to be willing to pour more money into her career, and she would really hit it big with her next single, Boy's a Liar, catching another viral TikTok song. And that went viral, yeah, her I don't know. The public eye. And if you needed any more evidence that Ice Spice was playing the game correctly, she would get a shout out and even a feature on a Taylor Swift song called Karma, which 
which in the music industry is like getting LeBron to back you. That's all it's trash. Actually, the two seem to be friendly. Taylor Swift said that she was always listening to Ice Spice's music, apparently, and she was even with her at the Super Bowl, doing very weird things with her hands. And it really did seem like Ice Spice would solidify herself with the release of the massive Barbie movie last year, as her second song with Nicki Minaj would be synonymous with this Barbie resurgence. This hit actually made her the first rapper to release four songs that reached the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the very same year. Which is very hard for me to wrap my head around when we've had artists like Drake, Eminem, Lil Wayne, Akon, and DMX, amongst Wait, many others. How the how he put Akon in my been absolute superstars over the years. Either way, 2023 was a great year for the ginger rapper. They have you uh, uh, declaring her as the artist perfectly poised to have a breakthrough year hey. in 2023. You feel like this is your time, this is your year? For sure. But 2024 so far has not been as kind to her. And it has me looking at her career through the same lens that I see someone like DaBaby just two individuals who struck lightning in a bottle, who had their own unique sounds and went super viral and then super mainstream for about a year or two. And then once that newness kind of wears off, every song kind of starts to sound the same. And when aided by a little bit of controversy, they start to fall off. Now in the name of continuing her fast food music, yeah, I, I can run, see that, I can see that. With a rather prophetic lead single for her debut album, Y2K, Thank You The Shit, fart which was a perfect way to kick off this album thank you the shit bitch you not even a fart yes that is the chorus to this masterpiece and this was actually a diss towards fellow female rapper lotto as the two had been sending subliminal shots at each other for the last year talk about a joke of a song that many people likely had to approve before it came out she actually has a ton of bars over the years about pooping i'm the shit i'm that bitch I miss poopy. I miss poopy, but I never smell. An artist's debut album is definitely something that could make or break their career, and with her using this as the lead single, that led to this album selling a modest 28,000 copies. Which, let's be honest, 28,000 is not that bad for an artist of her caliber, but with the it's not bad for a record label, and the fact that she was technically selling this album on pre-order for over 10 months before it would even come out, and then when you package that information with all this bullshit bundles artists can now count as sales once again, you'll see that the 28,000 number is very inflated. Can you guys imagine getting this shit on vinyl? Jesus Christ. The other thing is that year over year, iSpice has lost over 50% of her monthly listeners on Spotify while producing her debut album in the process, meaning her old songs are now cooling off and her new songs are not hitting like the old ones. In fact, she doesn't even look happy in her natural habitat of twerking anymore. And now with this latest feud that she has found herself in, she is losing followers and fans at a massive rate. And it all really started when she decided to take a rapper named Cleo Trappa on tour with her. Basically, this Cleo person would come forward and say that Ice Spice treated her like shit during the duration of this tour. Nobody should make you feel less than or make you feel like shit because they gave you an opportunity. The two of them had apparently been industry friends for the last couple of years, but it sounds like the extent of their relationship was mainly public appearances and content creation. It's like every time she's like inviting me out, cause we never chilled on some like chill shit, bro. Like it was never like there's some chill. It was always like in the blogs the next day and the song is dropping too. So it was like, what? This girl kind of uses me for her rollouts. She was set to open for Ice Spice, but was actually only offered this opportunity one day before the tour began, claiming that the reason Ice Spice invited her to come perform in the first place had to do with her trying to rebrand her image to make it look a certain way. So the ending of July. And that's one way to um end a girl and somebody career, bro. Say send say something about colorism and say and a black person saying that too, bro. Now, all the black people just going, oh yeah. I, I get a call it's from Ice, um, very early in the morning. Cleo, come It's on. talking about the LGBTQ community and talking about the black community. That's going to get you packed up quick. Tour with me, I miss you, come. And I'm just like, girl, I'm not about to come on tour with you and watch you perform all month. Like, I got a nigga. <laughs> I got stuff that I could be doing. I could be getting money. I have opportunities. In New York, I have brand deals, I have things that I need to focus on. So for me to travel all over the United States with you to watch you perform, kind of crazy. She's like, no, I want you to perform. And I gag. You want me to perform? I already heard, I already heard this. About the last minute invite, 
Ice Spice insisted that everything would be taken care of from her travel accommodations like food and a place to stay to her actual performances. Keep in mind, this was a strenuous, unpaid opportunity that would take months of her life. Now obviously, when someone goes on tour and opens up for another artist, it is usually a great chance for them to gain a ton of fans and exposure. I heard, I heard that freestyle, that freestyle's ass. Bigger artists will recruit someone who makes similar music to them, or at least someone who can capture a similar fan base. Like back in the day, I saw Logic and Big Sean open up for Kid Cudi, and it was amazing because I knew all three artists, and so did most of the crowd. So I'm sure Cleo saw this as a big opportunity, but apparently once she would go on the tour, the mistreatment would begin. For example, she claims that she would often be sent on stage before the show was even advertised to start, meaning she was performing to an empty venue. Online says the show starts at 8. It would even say 9 sometimes. And guess what time I was going on? At 7.30, 7.45. I was going on before the show they, they did it so dirty, bro. It's like, oh, yeah, you finna go out there. You, the fans, they're gonna love you, all this stuff. Bro, I don't think the thing is open for the fans yet, bro. So she's just, she's just practicing for nothing. So that was kind of weird in itself. Now, apparently this was only the tip of the iceberg on this shitty situation. She claims that she had one day to prepare for the tour. Literally one day. So I'm just like, what do I have to pay for? Nothing. You're going to be with me. You're good. You're going to be with me. I already heard this song. I'm on not the sure. road. And we just sitting on the bus. We just like, yo, like, can somebody come with us to McDonald's? Like, nobody want to walk there by themselves. We, we take one of men with us. They like, oh, that's mad fall. Like, nah, like, we're this desert. It's scary. I don't know. I'm like, okay. Nobody said anything about food still. Come to find out, everybody ate. <laughs> Can you believe that? Everybody ate. Guess what? They all went to a steakhouse. Basically, it sounds like she was not part of the plan at all, and that by the end of the tour, it felt like she had overstayed her welcome. Remember, she wasn't even getting paid, and she even claims that while she was performing, her debit card was used to buy designer items behind her back, and it really just what? seems like the opportunity was not worth the stress, nor the time, or the effort that she was putting in, and that the opportunities she was missing out on to be there were far greater than what this had all turned into. On top of that, Ice Spice apparently stopped talking to her at all, right in the middle of this tour and basically outside of a stylist that she made friends with she was pretty much on her own i didn't have a room i was told i was gonna be with her but i didn't have a room a room for me backstage at all i was in her dressing room i didn't have no writer i was with her i was so confused like you're not being my friend so i'm going to make more friends like, girl, it's like she wanted me to be miserable and alone, and it just didn't happen because that's not what God had planned for me, boo. As some of you may know or probably don't know, I am a personal stylist, and I was hired as a backup stylist for Ice Spice Tour. And when I say everything that Cleo was saying is dead ass true, is dead ass true. The first thing that caught me off guard was when I first made it there, okay, I get with Spice, and me and her cool as hell, so we just be regularly talking about shit. I see she type got an attitude, so I asked her, like, what's up? Like, you good type shit? Like, you know. Filling her out. She like, oh yeah, I'm cool, woo, woo. It's just Cleo black ass doing too much. I'm like, damn, hold up. So now I get back in the room with Ice. She on FaceTime with Riot. She letting him know like, yeah, um, she doing too much. She blowing my scale. She was like, bitches gotta go. They asking for too much, woo, woo. Bitches acting broke. Like I'm really tired of her black ass. And I'm like, damn, like, why does she keep saying this? Like, what? And let's be honest, guys, it's not rare for an opener to get less than preferential treatment while on tour with a bigger act. And you do hear a lot of stories about openers not even spending any time at all around the main act, despite them being on tour together for months. But granted, this was apparently her friend, who she allegedly begged last minute to do this with her. I took a step back and just made the opportunity what I could make it. But it, it all right, let's, let's speed this shit up. Claim that Ice Spice has sold her soul. Everybody hold hands. Yeah, she definitely okay, saw her song. Lord. She like she was tweaking, like like God was just trying to touch her, and she was just don't touch me, God, don't touch me, like bruh, <laughs> like bruh. Thank you so much for bringing this amazing. I don't know what's wrong with her. Right now, with this amazing streaming hour. Look at her. Lord, we are all just the demon trying to just come out of the same place, which is the top end. What is he doing too? We all want to experience different things in our live chat. So thank you so much for bringing all of us together. 
and I pray that you allow us to grow on other people, on each other, and I pray that you allow us to reach any measures in his life, and you just watch over us daily, you bless us, you allow us to bless other people with our work and our amazing craft, and you help us enjoy this night, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 She would also share this text message exchange they had where she expressed her frustrations after the tour and I Spice pretty much just replies in these messages that none of that was her fault and that it wasn't that deep. Later she would even respond to these claims on a Twitter space where she had this to say. Y'all put in laughing faces, y'all know this. not going that he had made people even more upset and they called out Ice Spice's hypocrisy for clowning this woman for eating a lot when many speculate that she's been off that Ozempic weight loss. She did lose weight pretty fast. I ain't gonna lie. And the speculation actually got so strong. And like when she did this, I already knew her um her um career is going downhill. Cause when you start entertaining people talking shit about you, bro, it's done for you. She released rough. this like workout weightlifting. And this workout is terrible. Video. They really didn't prove anything. People also claim that she basically is someone who thinks that her shit don't stink and that she has way too big of an ego for how volatile her career is at this point. I mean, honestly, I didn't think this was like the biggest deal in the world or really like cancel worthy. But with most of her fans being women, they aren't going to like the whole mean girl shit, especially when it feels like she was punching down here on someone who was supposed to be her friend someone who she invited to come perform on this tour for free i don't know to me if i'm her manager we aren't releasing any more albums just the occasional single trying to go viral on tiktok and honestly the primary focus shouldn't even be on rap anymore like i think she has to transition into an inf like she could transition just like the only fans though she'll pop she'll definitely pop she'll be bigger than bad baby i ain't gonna lie that'll be like she yeah go to only fans and you'll be straight. Like, oh, sir, or an IG model, or an OF girl, or some shit like that. Yeah, like because be only fans. Me, the curtains on her music career are closing pretty. Yeah, because I mean, nobody's really checking for her music. Nobody was really checking for her music. Unless you're like trying to react for some content, but damn fast. But I do want to know what you guys think about Ice Spice. I want to know what you. I don't give a fuck about her. That's all I got to say. And, um, this really was a long video I'm talking about bullshit. Ice Spice. That's bullshit. But, um, yeah. On to the last one.